I've never been a huge fan of the show, but did you guys know you could actually look up the entire Naruto hand spell catalog? That's pretty cool. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to do a quick little review on this game right here. Uh, it's called Rock Paper Wizard, and it's actually a fully licensed Dungeons & Dragons game made by WizKids, uh, which, if I recall, they are the same company that make all of the Clicks games, the uh, the miniatures tabletop games where the bases click to change their stats, like Hero Clicks and Mage Knight, I think was actually the original one. Pretty sure WizKids does all of those, and they also do a couple lines of D&D miniatures as well as Pathfinder miniatures, I believe. Um, so yeah, they made this game. Uh, this is a sort of a party game. It's for three to six players, takes about 30 minutes, and it's got a lot of physical action to it. The concept of the game is that you are one of a group of wizards who are sort of trying to storm a dragon's cave, and in the process you're dueling each other because you want to be the first one to the horde. And the way that you cast spells at each other is by physically making hand gestures at other players and shouting the name of the spell. And so the player that you shout at <laughs> and point to your gesture at, as well as the gesture that you make, is the spell that you cast. And then you sort of resolve the spells in a clockwise pattern around the game, uh, around the table, and that sort of decides who moves closer to the dragon's horde, who gets bumped further towards the, ca the cave's exit, um, and sort of generally decides who's winning. Uh, the way the game works in proper is, let me move this out of the way, actually let me go over the game pieces real quick. So first off, you've got this right here, a little potion. This is the player one marker. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a speed potion. Um, the player with that is the one whose spell resolves first, and then you go clockwise around the table. Then you've got these player tokens. Each one represents a different wizard that's in the dungeon, sort of like trying to storm towards the dragon's horde. They're all different colors. It's basically just a, a color assignment for each player. Uh, so those will get randomly passed out or people can pick their favorite color, whatever. Then here, you've got wizard tokens. These are to go on the board so that you can keep track of who is where. They just correspond to the wizard tiles. And then here, you've got the actual board or map, whatever you want to call it. So you can see here at one end, you've got the orange section, and that is the dragon's horde. And then down this end, you've got the blue section, and that is the cave exit. And if you look, the first three spaces, or I should say the three spaces on either side, are slightly tinted to that color. So you've got three orange spaces, three blue spaces. Uh, those have to do with gameplay, I'll get into that in a minute. So basically, everybody gets assigned a dra uh, wizard tile, everybody takes their matching wizard marker, they put it on the center line of the board, that's where everybody starts. And everybody starts with three gold, you've got these gold tokens here, so this is one gold, and you've got five gold, and you've got ten gold. Right? So everybody starts with three gold, and that is because some spells cause you to lose gold, and if you don't have any gold on you, that spell would be kind of pointless. Um, so everybody starts with three gold, you've got your wizard markers on the board, and you've got your wizard tile in front of you to keep track of who is who, and one player randomly gets the player one token. Um, you then have these right here, which are the giant oversized spell cards, which is awesome. And each spell card has a couple of simple things on it, very easy to follow. So this card is Passwall. These are actually classic D&D spells. Um, so Passwall, you've got its name, you've got the hand gesture that you use to actually cast it, you've got a couple of symbols that give you a quick description of how the spell works, and if you haven't yet mastered the symbols, you've got a brief description down here of what the spell does. So Passwall says the caster advances three spaces towards the goal, towards the gold, uh, and the target also advances two spaces, so you kind of pull somebody along with you um, if you're trying to be friendly, I suppose. Uh, the spells actually have a color coding to them, so you've got blue, you've got green, and you've got red. So blue is a defensive or a movement spell, so pass wall, that's a blue. Then green is a gold spell, so it's going to have something to do with gold. And then red is a straight up attack spell, right? So let's take a look here at fear, obviously. Symbol is pointing, so you just point at the person, thumb thumb down. A lot of times the, the gestures will be very similar except for like what your thumb is doing or what your other fingers are doing or how they're tucked. Um, so fear says target gets pushed two inches per poorer wizard than them. Um, or per poorer wizard. Not sure if it's poorer than them or poorer than you, but the rule book would explain that. So you can see there on that card, you can see the symbols sort of explain that, and then also there's a full description down the bottom. Um, looking at this one, dominate person. It's a crooked finger pointing at a person or gestured towards a person. Um, and that says target gets pushed three spaces towards the cave and gives you, gives the caster one gold. 
It's not, that's not just a gold from the bank, that's from that person. Um, as far as things that can't be performed because, let's say for example, that person didn't have any gold, they just move. You just do the part of the spell that you can actually perform. The rulebook specifies don't worry too much if there's part of the spell that you can't do because it doesn't work in the current situation. Ignore stuff you can't do, do as much of the spell as you can. Um, the setup for the game after you put your guys down on the board is that you take your sort of spell book here, your collection of spell cards, you shuffle them, you put them face down on the table, and then you flip out three cards face up, and that is your current spell book. And so once those are out and everybody gets a chance to look at them, everybody goes rock, paper, wizard. And on wizard, you make the hand gesture of the spell you want to cast, and you point it at the person that you want to cast it on. So right now we've got fear, we've got dominate person, and we've got pass wall. And so those are the three spells that you could cast. Um, once everybody has cast their spell, you hold your gesture in place, and you go around the board starting with the person who casts first, their spell resolves, then you go to the person to their left, and then their left, so you go around clockwise. Once every, every spell has been resolved, and people have been moved around the board, and things have happened, that's sort of the end of the round. What you do then is you dump the oldest spell, the spell all the way to the, the right, farthest from the deck, you move the other two spells over, and you flip out a new spell. Um, oh, I should clarify, the number of spells is equal to the number of players. Three players, three spells, five players, five spells. I think it maxes out at five. If you have six players, you still just do five spells because that would be way too much. I think there's about 25 spells in the deck total. So there's a bunch of variety. Um, and some of the spells are more complex than others. So uh, an easy one that I can find for you. Here you go. Fireball. Straight up attack spell, target gets pushed five spaces towards the exit. Nothing fancy about that, just kaboom, and this is the symbol. Meteor Swarm, still an attack spell, a little more complex though. So that's an open hand, like this, pointed towards the target, and it says the target gets pushed one space towards the exit, plus two spaces per spell to the right of this spell in the book. So, in the spell book. So if it were here, right next to the deck, and you had a three spell sort of setup, that's one, plus two, plus two, total of five spaces towards the exit. If it was here, that would be one, plus, uh, plus two, total of three. And if it was here, with nothing to the right of it, it would just be the one. So this spell gets weaker as it advances through the book and eventually pops off the end. Um, so yeah, end of the round, you update the spells by adding a new one, sliding the old two over, or the old however many over. Uh, everybody that is in the orange zone, so here, the orange three spaces, bumps out to the, the space just outside the orange zone, so four in from the edge. Uh, everybody that's in the blue zone bumps out one space over, so they're on the fourth space out from the edge, and I think that's because they just don't want you at the edge of the board, because then spells that advance you, um, or do things that would move you towards the edge, uh, basically won't do anything, and so they slide you back towards the middle. Uh, first player, oh, and scoring, sorry, <laughs> scoring. Uh, if you are the most advanced player, so the player closest to the horde, you get five gold. If you're the second closest player to the horde, you get three gold. Uh, if there are a tie for either of those positions, so if there are two players tied for first, they don't divide the five, they each get five. Uh, so for say for example, somehow we we're playing a three player game and all three players were tied for first, they all get five. Uh, same thing for second. If two people are tied for second, they each get three. If you're playing a four person game and two are tied for first and two are tied for second, they both get five and then they both get three. So uh, there's no dividing up of gold, you get what you get. First player to reach 25, or more than 25, causes the game to end, and they will also most likely win because at the end of the game, whoever has the most gold wins. If there is a tie, you just keep playing until there's no tie. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's the whole game. It's fun. Um, you actually start to feel like you're casting spells after a while because you're shouting spell names and you're you're casting them at your opponent. Uh, so you just, you know, rock, paper, wizard, or rock, paper, wizard, or whatever it is, um, pointing at whoever you're casting the spell at. And some spells have more intricate effects, like I said. There are some spells that actually change your target, so you might have been casting a spell over here, but then somebody's spell resolves before you, and it moves your target one to the right, so now you're casting at them. Or you might even be casting at that same person that just moved you now, so you have to be careful about the effects of spells. Um, oh, there is one other thing that I forgot to mention. If two people cast the same spell at each other, so say for example, I cast Fireball at the person on my right, and they cast Fireball at me at the same time. Uh, neither of us actually cast Fireball. What we do is what's called a Wild Surge. We each take the top card of the spell deck and put it face down in front of us, and when it gets to our turn to resolve our spell, we then flip it over and that's the spell we're resolving. 
uh, and that's supposed to represent the sort of arcane energy that's bouncing around inside of the cave from all these spells being cast, disrupting our abilities. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the game. I think we picked it up at Barnes and Nobles a while ago. Um, Barnes and Nobles and Target, I would say. If you don't have a gaming store near you and you don't feel like ordering online, you kind of just want to go and pick up a game and look at it and sort of feel it out before you buy it, Barnes and Nobles and Target are surprisingly decent when it comes to carrying a good collection of not just mainstream games. They don't just have Monopoly and, you know, Connect Four. They still have those, obviously. But they've had larger and larger, like, proper gaming sections over the course of the last, like, five to ten years. It's actually kind of impressive, and I don't know if it's an initiative by the companies to bring in crowds from other types of stores to their store, or if they've just decided that it makes sense for those to, them to carry those things. Um, but they have some good stuff. Some of it's a little more mainstream within the gaming community, like Settlers of Catan or Mansion of Madness or uh, Ticket to Ride, games that you know everybody owns a copy of. It's like one of the first things you buy when you move into this type of gaming society. Um, but uh, they have some new stuff as well, and we picked this up there. It was one of the first games that, or first places that we saw this game come out. Um, another one that I might do a demo on later is. Um, Villains. It's actually a, a Disney licensed game where you play as one of the villains from a Disney movie trying to achieve that villain's goal from the movie and the first player to achieve their goal wins the game. We actually first saw it release at Gen Con in 2018 and they were only doing pre-release and they ran out of copies. And when we asked them, when will this be available in regular stores, they said the first store that's going to get it and they'll have sort of a, an exclusive deal to sell it for the first month before other stores get it is Target. And I don't know if that's because that's a Disney product, and so obviously they wanted to license to a more commonplace big box store. But I'm seeing a lot more proper gaming games show up in those stores. So I think this was like 20 bucks at Barnes and Nobles. It's a great game. It's kind of a party game, like I said. Might also lend itself well as a drinking game if you're into that, uh, because it's kind of fun. It's kind of goofy. You're shouting at each other. You're making funny hand gestures. Um, as long as people don't start hitting each other in the face, you should be good to go. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun game. I would definitely recommend picking up a copy. And uh, that has been this review of Rock Paper Wizard. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for checking the video out. If you haven't yet, uh, please go down below and subscribe. Uh, it helps me out, lets me know how many people are enjoying the content, lets me know what to focus on. Uh, also, like and comment. Any comments that you leave, I try to respond to as quickly as I can. If you have any recommendations, suggestions for videos you want me to do, changes to format, anything like that, I like to keep an eye on those. Um, other than that, yeah, I will see you guys soon in the next video. Have a good one. Fireball.